Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a movie review this week. It's a black comedy that came out on July 24, 2009, as a video on demand release. It was soon later been released in theaters on August 21st. It's called World's Greatest Dad. Yeah, and this is the DVD release that I picked up at Dollar Tree. Yeah, for only a dollar. Definitely worth it. <laughs> Because I now have a Dollar Tree where I live. So that's cool. And now I get to find some more um, DVD titles. And Blu ray, too. It was so rare. But hey, it was worth it. Because um, I remember watching this movie uh, when it aired on TV on the movie channel. I didn't see it in theaters. But I thought I'd give it a look because it has you know, Ron Williams in it. It's a movie about what was it like if a father who's a writer and an English teacher wants to give himself a chance of a lifetime after um, a freak accident had occurred. Well, he finally gets his chance. So this is exactly how the story goes. The movie stars Rob Williams, Alexi Gilmore, Daryl Sabara, who's been best known for the movie uh, Spy Kids. He grew up <laughs> ever since. Evan Martin, Jeff Pearson from the TV show Unhappily Ever After. It's hard to believe he went from that to this. Henry Simmons, Mitzi McCall, Jermaine Williams, Lorraine Nicholson, Morgan Murphy, Toby Huss, Tom Kenny, Always been best known for doing voice acting like SpongeBob SquarePants and Walk Was My Life. He also does some TV shows like The Edge back in the 90s. But Jill Tolley, Bruce Hornsby making a cameo appearance, and Chris Novoselic. It's written and directed by Bobcat Goldthwait. So let's get right to it. The movie begins when a single father and a high school English teacher named Lance Clayton, who's played by Robin Williams, had dreamed of becoming a famous writer since all of his previous novels that he has written have been rejected by publishers. He has a 15-year-old son named Kyle, who's played by Daryl Sabara, who happens to be a complete jerk, an asshole, and a pervert since he's into pornography. He actually despises everyone, including his father. He's also a student at the school where Lance teaches poetry class. His only friend that he has in the world is Andrew, who's a fellow student spending more time at the Clayton house trying to avoid his alcoholic mother, who's played by Evan Martin. Due to his poor academic performance and bad behavior, the school principal had advised Lance that Kyle should transfer to a special needs school because he might be under the spectrum. But that, of course, will lead to a problem if he doesn't cooperate. Lance is also in a non-committed relationship with a younger art teacher who is very sexy and attractive and tall, too, named Claire, who is played by Alexi Gilmore. Spends more time with, with a fellow teacher named Mike, whose writing class was more successful than his, played by Henry Simmons. So during those nights, Claire has canceled her dates and he is all alone. Lance decided to bond with his elderly neighbor Bonnie, who's played by Mitzi McCall, while he was smoking pot outside. And Kyle is just in his bedroom, you know, peeking inside Bonnie's window. Because, yeah, he is a pervert. So during that day, they decided to spend time together. You know, Kyle decided to get a new computer, at this rate, a new laptop. So that way, you know, he can set it up uh, with his friend Andrew, just as they arrived. They were, they were actually um, having some lunch, like Chinese food, and then they were going to go out to see a movie. That didn't work out, so he spent all of his time alone watching the film, and until um, he decided to receive a call from Claire telling her about 
going out to eat for dinner during that night. So after that, they decided to spend the evening you know, with Kyle and Claire to go eat at uh, Outback Steakhouse. So they had a good time, even though they were making conversations while Kyle was just being a, a perverted asshole. He does something completely stupid. So anyway, Lance decided to take her home, giving her a goodnight kiss. Wanted to stay over, but unfortunately, he made a promise that he'll, you know, he's going to come back and and see if Kyle is doing okay. That is until he discovered that he actually died in a freak accident. Turned out to be an autoerotic affixation. Yeah, which meaning he, he strangles himself while masturbating, you know, looking at all the pornographic pictures on the internet in his bedroom. Trying to avoid the incident that happened, he decided to stage Kyle's death as a suicide by writing a suicide note on Kyle's computer and hangs his son's body in the closet before he was being sent to the hospital in an ambulance. So then a classmate later obtains a suicide note from the police records and publishes it in the school's newspaper. But suddenly all the students in the faculty had read the, the article and claimed that they were actually friends with Kyle and actually touched on how deep and intelligent he shows himself in all of his writings. So deep down of it, considering that he was an asshole, he has the of a hero. So now they're enjoying the attention of all of his writing that he was finally receiving, so that alone was when Lance decided to, to write a phony journal pretending that he wrote it before his death. So now they make Kyle a cult phenomenon at school, already with his journal being published um, at bookstores everywhere, you know, with Lance honor, so now he's becoming the center of the attention that he never thought he was going to get even though Andrew did confront him about about what's going on so then Lance landed in a television appearance of a nationally broadcast talk show and the school principal decided to rename the school's library in Kyle's honor Lance had soon had realized that all this fame and fortune that he's receiving will soon become the biggest problem of his life and for a black comedy like this, I really did enjoy it. I thought Robin Williams gave us a stellar performance in his career. I mean, definitely the right choice to play him. I mean, I, don't, I would imagine someone else would have taken the job and, and played something as funny as Williams. But, yeah, I, I thought he was very good in this. I mean, considering the fact that Williams has been doing a lot of crappy movies... Yeah, you know, throughout the 2000s, but I think this was one of his last good ones that he had for a while. And it shows. Because he did work together with his best friend, you know, Bobcat Goldthwait. And he has a cameo appearance in the movie, too, as the limo driver. Yeah. With surprisingly an uncredited role. Yeah. I thought he did a great job, too. And, yeah, it even had a connection, too because of his recent tragic death because it also involves you know, suicide and even though part of this was just his attempt to become famous I mean he did a, a bad thing for doing that of course even though part of this was you know Kyle's fault because he's the one who who did this um, on his own I mean he did it by accident but that's that's the problem. I mean, he was a complete asshole, a jerk. Yeah. It's hard to believe that Daryl Sabaro played that guy because you know he's been best known for for playing the kid in Spy Kids. But yep, he's all grown up. He wound up becoming a teenager at the time when he did this movie. Yeah, he's already an adult now, but when he did this film, you know, it's it's hard to believe that he finally took the the risk of playing a different role. Where he finally gets to curse and and just act like a complete jerk in front of everybody, and it's like he can do whatever he wants. But I, I thought he was very funny too. I, I, I like some of those funny moments when he started to, you know, talk about 
all the sick stuff, you know, with and with his father and and his friend and you know, even during the dreams, you know, I, I remember I sort of seeing um, you started seeing him in the backgrounds while all the kids were like worshiping him. They started fighting against uh, all the stuff that he loves, such as the the Bruce Hornsby CD and and what do you know? It they even yeah, because they claimed that he was a fan of Bruce Hornsby and yep, he has a cameo. And that's something we expected, but because with movies like this, they always have to throw in a cameo appearance by. A musical artist yeah an artist that came out in the 80s and they thought well this is something that they wanted to have in a film like this I guess this movie also had sort of a, a headers vibe towards it because it is another film about what was it like if you have a student who's a jerk and wants up um, getting killed you know can suddenly brings in all the attention at school you know, after finding out what, what happened. So now it's like they're worshipping him for what it's worth. So it, it has that similar connection. I thought Alexi Gilmore did a great job. You know, I thought she was sexy, attractive, you know, and also very cute too. I mean, she's very funny. Uh, I, I thought all the scenes together with, with her and, and Williams were definitely um, and icing on the cake. I mean, it's like you just want to see more of them together. Yeah. Um, all the actors in the film, I thought they did a great job. Uh, I do admit, though, there was an ending of the film that did shock me. I'm not a big fan of the unbelievable truth. I never was. But I thought it worked. I thought the ending kind of shows about what was it like if all of this had happened, knowing that he, you know, he couldn't just handle this any longer because, you know, considering this guy is so mean to everybody, and now they're already going to dedicate it to him anyway. So he thought that all of this is not going to last. And you don't want that to happen because then I think this is going to be a problem. But he had the guts, and he did it. So he finally got what he wanted. But because you know Lance was a great guy. You know, he, he's a nice guy. He just didn't want to avoid all the embarrassment, you know, for his son. That's that's the problem. But either way, it's a dark, twisted, disturbing, and very hilarious comedy that you'll never forget. And I really would recommend it, especially for those who are Robin Williams fans. Had a lot of great music and Great choice of music, too. So, yeah, let's face it. Bobcat Goldthwait is a genius. I, I love his writing and his direction in this movie. It's definitely the perfect choice that he's ever done. And I'm just glad that he did it. It, it was worth it. So, that's World's Greatest Dad. And I give that film four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.